First round action continues here in the Atlanta bracket as CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA tournament rolls on here at Veterans Memorial Arena in Jacksonville. The winner of tonight's game will match up with fourth seeded LSU on Saturday, winners earlier against Iona. Syracuse and Texas A&M, here are the 10 that will be on the floor to open. Jones, Pompey, Walker, Kirk, and Law for the Aggies. Watkins, Nichols, Roberts, Devendorf, and McNamara for Syracuse. One 12 seed has gone on to victory today. Montana and Texas A&M will try to do the same. Their first trip into the NCAA tournament since 1987. A healthy contingent of Aggie fans are out here and they're yelling Giggum as the tip is controlled to Syracuse and McNamara. Easily the player in this uh, tournament that's got uh, the bullseye on his jersey coming into this tournament after what he did in New York. And right away, inside, foul is spotted against the Aggies as Terrence Roberts takes it in there. There you see Jimmy Beheim won the national title in 2003. A Hall of Famer, his 25th tournament appearance. Roberts who struggles at the free throw line. Can't get that one to go. And Billy Gillespie, um, you could call him Bill Self White. He worked with Bill at Kansas, of course, and uh, Tulsa way back in the day. And uh, two time Big 12 Coach of the Year. We talked about the uh, bigs for Syracuse yesterday with uh, Jim Beheim. He said it's going to be critical that they play well. They gave him good contributions up in New York in the Big East tournament. Well, you see the story on the Aggies, a 10 and 6 record. That victory against the Longhorns at home was probably the opportunity that gave them this chance. And it's been such a long drought between appearances in the NCAAs. These guys are just absolutely. Excited to be here. Law shot them here, and he makes his first bucket here inside the three-point arc. You've seen a lot of this team, Stephen Bardo, and they will guard you. Oh, they'll guard you and get in your face, bloody your nose, and A.C. Law is the creator. We saw it against Texas in the game-winning three he hit in College Station, and he could create a shot, but there's none there. Roberts a floater. Not a good shot. Taken down off the deck. Roberts recovers it. Feeds to Watkins who gets the floater to fall. Good interior passing. And you know, Billy Gillespie wouldn't admit it yesterday, but I got to think they're going to try to get into Syracuse's legs and then see how much they have left after that marvelous four day trip up in New York. Well, tonight, teams that had early leads struggle down the stretch of games. 18 point lead at one point for Wilmington. And Xavier had a nine-point lead that they couldn't hold on to against Gonzaga. And there's an answer from downtown. Chris Walker, senior from Grapevine, Texas. Makes called it five to three. Called a powerless forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one, right of the great, one of the great backhanded compliments <laughs> of all time from Billy Gillespie. He just said, he, you know, he's, he, he couldn't, he can't keep this kid out of the lineup. Uh, you know, your coach keeps looking for reasons, but he keeps playing. A walk on that made it. Roberts, Humphrey fight for it. Boy, you're right. A and M will just get in your kitchen, won't they? Oh yes, they will. And it's not going to be a pretty game, ladies and gentlemen. Not when Texas A and M is involved. Law, Joseph Jones trying to keep it alive. And a foul spotted. We'll go against uh, Marlon Pompey, the junior from Toronto, Canada. No doubt this is the hottest story in college basketball coming into this NCAA tournament. The flight of the orange making it into the NCAAs. They were on the bubble bubble, if you will, <laughs> and won their way in by winning four in a row in the Garden of New York with Jerry McNamara hitting big bucket after bucket. And you see how he is garnering quite a bit of attention from Dominic Kirk on that inbound. And one wonders if they are this year's West Virginia, the, the team last year that played their way in and had a good run, got to the finals of the Big East tournament, didn't win it, but then had that marvelous run in the NCAAs. All the way to the Elite Eight and had a big lead against Louisville that they could not hold on to. There's a steal on the overplay by Jones. AC Law the fourth operating. And Mike, while you talk about Syracuse having that 
tremendous run and possibly being this year's West Virginia, I'm curious to see whether they will revert back to that shellacking they, they got served in Chi-Town by DePaul. Just beat down and seemed like a melting point or a tipping point for this team, but boy, they have rallied since. Antonis Kavalovskis has come into the game number 44. Lithuanian. Well, and the key is, you know, Jerry McNamara has been a constant. Other people stepped up in New York as his scoring average didn't go up. He hit game winning shots, but his assists were up at eight and a half per, and that means other people were finishing. Devendorf was one of those. Nichols. Walker with another rebound. But well, Nichols usually makes you pay for a wild to look like that. Avalaskas in traffic. Roberts got a piece of that one, and Jerry McNamara clears it for Syracuse. The only remaining star from the national championship team, McNamara. Can't hit from deep. And once again, it's AC Law, the fourth, defeating Kavalaskas. Kavalaskas gives it back to him. A nice idea. Nichols with the deflection, saved by McNamara. Was some hustle plays on both ends. The thing I like right now, Tim and Mike, is that the officials are letting them play. They know they have two physically gifted teams here. They're going to let the guys kind of decide the style of play early. Nichols off the curl. Right over Chris Walker. And, and normally, Steven, as a player, I used to I used to take the first four or five minutes of a game and figure out how the referee is going to call. They try to establish it during that first timeout, and uh, usually you, you can get a pretty good hold on how you can play the rest of that game. Rebound cleared by Daryl Watkins. And here's Devendorf, young man that's very talented. He has his moments. And off the ball, foul spotted as Nichols gets tied up with Chris Walker. We're tied at five. And then just their last five shots. Nichols running the curl to perfection here in Jacksonville. We're tied at five in our finale here in Jacksonville. Time now for our Southwest Airlines sideline report. Billy Gillespie in his second year at Texas A&M. Hard to believe, but his first coaching job was at Copper's Cove High School in Texas. The school's athletic director was Hal Mummy, the former Kentucky and current New Mexico State football coach. And of course, he spent some time at uh, Texas El Paso. In the last couple of years, he has been on a glory road, much like Don Haskins was who mentored him some when he was in El Paso. And he talked about how special that was to have a Don Haskins put him into a truck and go for a ride and, and get bits of nuggets and, and nuggets of wisdom from Haskins and really has helped him through his through his uh, his job here. His mom, 74 years young, wimpy, along with his sisters are here. No doubt getting accustomed to what the yell leaders want her to say. And he has really <laughs> mined the state of Texas too, Tim. They got 15 guys on the roster in state. Good passing out to Dominique Kirk. That was a wonderful find by Joseph Jones. Traveling call down the other end. Law getting into it, making a heads up play. But that type, see, that type of skip pass against this zone is what's going to get them open looks for jump shots on that last possession. I agree. And, and the, the zone of Syracuse really hasn't given AM that much problem. They've had open looks. Jones had an open look before from about 12 that he couldn't convert, but they're really doing a fine job of moving the basketball. And that turnover by Josh Wright got him a seat right next to Jim Beheim. McNamara back on the floor. Jones has that one knocked away. That's a very active 2-3 zone. Ball on the deck, and the foul against Devendorf. And Jim Beheim a little upset with Devendorf. So he'll bend his ear a bit, and Josh Wright, no doubt, will have an opportunity to get back into the game. Shock treatment uh, substitution patterns not uncommon with Jim Beheim. Well, is, that, is that just a revolving? The, you know, <laughs> I'm, in, I'm next to get yelled at here. <laughs> oh, he's bending the ear just a bit. Yeah, I think Beheim understands that they're in a dogfight, and they've got to bring the same level of intensity that AM, a and has or they'll lose out on all those loose balls and all the long rebounds that you'll get when you play a zone and force a lot of outside jumping. In Syracuse's long history of success in the NCAA tournament, this is not lost on Jim Beheim. They have had more success 
when they were early exits from the Big East tournament and knew they were going to get an at-large bid, as you see the answer from Kabalovskis. And the thing that I like is what they're doing against the zone, it's man principles. They're doing a lot of screening along the top and getting a good swing of the basketball and getting good looks. McNamara looking for his first three of the night. Dominic Kirk with the challenge of defending the outstanding Syracuse star. Josh Wright got his man airborne, sends it back out to Jerry, who has 10 on the shot clock. Tremendous help defense by AM. McNamara turns it over. Boy, the Aggies just won't let you run your stuff. Walker again. Timeout. Syracuse and the Aggie faithful. Almost a thousand strong enjoying this 8 nothing run. They came here to gig them, and so far, the Orange has been gig. Texas A&M by eight, and Monday on CBS, find out why critics call Neil Patrick Harris TV's number one scene stealer on a new episode of How I Met Your Mother. Monday on CBS, America's number one network. See, I, I mentioned the gig of thing. That's, that's really the, the chant, Mike, uh, there at Texas A&M. Well, I, I, I'm all over with this. <laughs> How they advertise that chant, baby. Uh, Shania Twain needs to get one of those belts. <laughs> 13 to 5, Jerry McNamara is taking a seat next to Jim Beheim. Out of the timeout, Josh Wright on the wing over Law. And, and we should say that McNamara has hobbled with a groin injury and has been over the last couple of weeks, a situation that we need to monitor. Yeah, it, it's amazing what he did, given the fact that he had been bothered by that, that groin injury throughout not only the Big East tournament, but even prior to that, the last half of the month of February. In traffic, Jones is rejected by Roberts. That time he got a piece of the body. That's really the first look that Jones has had around the basket this evening. And the second leading score for AM, a little bit over 15 a game, and he really sets up the inside outside attack with he and AC Law. Louis McCroskey picked up that foul rather than Roberts. And it may take him some time, Stephen, to figure out where his shots are going to come from in this zone, uh, inside, how to shape up against it. Really, as you, we talked to Stephen before the game, uh, Colorado really the only team in the Big 12 that runs anything reasonably similar to what Syracuse does. Similar, Defensive. Yeah, defensively, and they have the, the similar length that Syracuse does. And I believe that's what makes this you know, zone defense so effective because of their length and athleticism on the back line. Even Gore, way too strong. Roberts there to clean it up. Terrence Roberts played so big in that Connecticut game. One of the great shots of conference tournament week was Roberts who had fouled out of that Connecticut game running and hugging Jerry McNamara after that game. Well, that was the game where they felt they had assured themselves a bit. They certainly improved their seeding by winning the conference tournament. Wright going end to end, and he's fouled. Dominic Kirk in position to pick it up. And that's, that's what I think that the, the more easy points they can manufacture against this defense, the better off they're going to be. Just over eight minutes gone, Texas A&M with the early lead. Strike up the band, Texas A&M leading by four. Eight minutes deep into the opening half. Jerry McNamara scoreless. And the Aggies lights out from downtown. They're a perfect three out of three, but uh, inside the arc, they're a paltry two for 10. And you see Josh right at the line here. He's provided a spark off the bench. Hit the three early and then got to the basket and, and drew the foul. And so. Points coming from right will offset McNamara being on the bench. Well, he is a rocket, too, up the floor. And we saw him yesterday, just a freakish athlete and what he can do. And I think he's a guy that can advance, you know, McNamara much better in the half court. But uh, I think right in the open floor can get some easy things for them. Well, I like Syracuse in this pressure right now. Trying to speed up the game and force a turnover. Law 
Keats Kavalopoulos. Nice work. AC Law the fourth, the junior from Dallas, laying it out for Kavalopoulos from uh, Vilnius, Lithuania. If that uh, name sounds familiar, that town is also the home of Arvidas Sabonis. And a nice reversal that time by Louis Makrosky. 16 14 Aggies. This is really good for Syracuse. Mike, as I look at it, you know, McNamara is on the bench, but they've been efficient here. Yeah, any, I think any minutes they can buy him in the first half are going to be gold. Uh, just to, to give him rest, make sure that he is fresh in the second half because that's really where he works his magic. You know, one of the things to remember, not only four games in four days, but the travel from Syracuse to Jacksonville. Granted, it is in the Eastern time zone, but it is a rather lengthy a whole, trip. A whole width of the country away. That's right. I think they were happy to get to play the last game of the four games on this Thursday. But the Thursday-Saturday dates are significant. As you see the little high-low action. You know, Tim, I, I hated the last game. It just never seemed yeah. like it come. I mean, yeah. this, you know, it was a 9.50 tip, and that's just all day to sit around <laughs> and think about what you're going to do. Nice high-low action on the other end, but this time Pompey unable to convert. And also, Mike, when you're sitting there, the coach has warned us not to watch too many games because you get emotionally tied up in what's going on, and you become drained by the time you get on the floor. And it's really not a day of rest. You know, when you think about it, I mean, you may get a nap, but still, uh, it's not a real day off day of rest because you've got prep, and it's just, you know, I think you just burn more energy waiting than anything. Fowlers against Marlon Pompey, his second. Roberts uh, holding his left wrist as he hit the deck. You know, going back to uh, playing the late games, I thought it was interesting today. Texas A&M having not been in this tournament since 1987. Game one, right out of they're at the they're at the yard watching the game. I mean, they are here as a group. It was as if they were saying, "We're going to enjoy every moment of it." Now, go inside the secret world of special forces soldiers working undercover around the world. The unit, TV's number one new drama, Tuesday after NCIS, right here on CBS. Well, they had 18 guys working on. They took a picture at, at half court last yeah. night. And, you know, Billy Gillespie's trying to build. Are, you know, build something here, and, and what he's trying to build is, fellas, this is this is what we aspire to every That's single right. year. Roberts missed everything there, and he's uh, been told to do that. It's not the first time he's uh, thrown up an air ball from the free throw line. Only shooting 41 percent from the strike. I thought it was refreshing not only to see the picture being taken at half court in their practice unis yesterday, but also them being here for game number one. They've been a breath of fresh air at this region. That's an offensive foul. Nice work by Syracuse defensively. Jim Beheim has seemingly found the right matchups as Kirk picks up the foul. Good, right? good job of Roberts you know, getting his body in front of Kirk, who was out of control. You really don't see too much anymore guards that stop at the free throw line on the drive. And Kavalovskis got all leather, and then on the putback, shot was too strong. There's Law. Nice defensive work by the Orange. Demetrius Nichols got it away. McNamara back on the floor, feeding Nichols on the other end. Well, you know, you wonder what it told us. Three white jerseys never made it over half court in that rush up the floor. Kavalovskis, too strong. And that, he's been operating in that short corner along the baseline, trying to find a seam in that zone. Boy, good defense by Walker on McNamara. That's where McNamara does a lot of his damage in the secondary break situation, trying to rub his man off of a high screen. But Walker stayed down and didn't go for the fake. Syracuse by one. McNamara off the pick for Roberts. He's improved his assists. You see the early turnovers, no points to show for early on in this game, but it's only a matter of time. You know he won't stop pulling the trigger. And, and the key to guarding him is on the screen roll. And that falls to the bigs that have to really be aware and show out when he comes off the screen. And that time, Jones did a nice job of bothering his shot. 
That ball was deflected nicely by Syracuse. Right on the other end. Way too strong. Walker collects the rebound. Boy, that layup uh, looked a bit like the one by Diebendorf in the, uh, the Connecticut game that, that he missed. Long. Right over McNamara. And it, see, we talked no rotation yeah. at all on that jump shot. They got a quite Wilhelm pitch. You know, a Phil Necro. Yeah. Uh, and he just wills the ball into the basket, Mike, and we see it all season long. And I've never seen anything like it, but uh, that sucker dances in the air but finds the net. <laughs> Matt Gorman is coming to the game for Syracuse. There he is on the low block receiving the pass. Kavalaskis on his hip. Nice entry pass. Watkins lost it on the way up. Had it right where he wanted it. So a little anxiety down on the baseline. Jones active from a defensive standpoint. Well, Jim Bayon talked about yesterday that that uh, McNamara's assist numbers would be up in the 8-9 range if, if guys finished all year long like they did in New York, mm -hmm. and that's a perfect example. Aggies leading it by two. Seven forty-two remaining. We welcome those of you just joining us. Syracuse only 35% from the floor, five turnovers. Jerry McNamara has yet to scratch and has sat much of this game. You talked about it, Mike, at the outset. You were curious as to whether Syracuse would feel some emotion coming off of that uh, four-day whirlwind in Gotham City, or would their legs be gone? And to this point, jury is still out. Yeah, mi mixed, mixed results, and I, I think both teams uh, have settled in. Texas A&M coming out and throwing a bit of a punch uh, early. Syracuse respond to uh, a close game, but it you know, almost looks like, Stephen, now the, the team that shoots 40% for the game may win. And that's how Texas A&M wants it. They want it ugly. They want to grind. They want you to have to work for everything that you get. And right now, Syracuse is happy to do that. The first one to 50? Is that what we're looking at, Stephen? I don't know if it's going to be the first one to 50 because Syracuse is so, uh, you know, potentially explosive on the offensive end. So we'll up it to 60? Let's, let's say the first <laughs> one to 60. There you go. 7.42 remaining. Aggies in their first NCAA tournament since 1987. They had a uh, tremendous past with Shelby Metcalf as coach for many, many years, but simply couldn't get it done. They've improved their facilities in College Station. And really what Billy Gillespie has done is change a culture, with, which was all football, and in the Big 12 win 10 games. That's the most wins for the Aggies since the Big 12 became the Big 12. Well, and he talked about it yesterday, and, and, and you touched on it. In, in a lot of ways, he has to thank Rick Barnes. Yes. In, in a sense that Barnes has gone down and established Texas as a home base for recruiting and keeping kids in state and, and Billy Gillespie's using that as a model and you know with the Houston area and the Dallas area there's a lot of talent there that can stay and a good example of that is a Martellus Bennett who was a freshman All-American football player tight end at Texas A&M but he's on the basketball mm -hmm. team here and a lot of great athletes from Texas used to stick to football but now they're looking towards basketball and the, and the history prior to Barnes really going down to Austin was that the outstanding basketball athletes all left the state and went to places like Michigan. They were being cherry picked by other programs. You look at our game summary, three point shooting for the Aggies much better than their shooting from inside the arc. Walker playing well and uh, McNamara an offer here in the early going. Not surprising where AM is going to make Jerry McNamara work for everything that he gets. Well, the good news for Syracuse, they're only down two, and he's failed to scratch. 7.35 remaining here in the opening half. Tim Brando, Mike Jaminski, Stephen Bardo, happy to have you with us. You're in the Atlanta bracket. Earlier today, play in the Minneapolis bracket, first round action. LSU has advanced with a come from behind win against Iona. And the winner of this game will take on John Brady's Tigers, the Southeastern Conference champions. Law missed everything. He did not hit the rim. At the buzzer, he caught some iron. Jones gets the rebound. All last touched by Syracuse. 
And Texas A&M will have it underneath their own basket. And Jim Beheim, very upset. You have a good defensive stand, and you really have nothing to show for it. There were two offensive rebounds in that sequence, and the uh, Aggies will have 32 seconds to work with. Terrence Roberts replaces Matt Gorman for Syracuse. Watch number 23 for A&M, Josh Carter. He's a zone buster. They will look to free him along the baseline or along the wing. Been Jimmy's uh, base defense for quite some time. Really went to it at 96. Right on cue. There's Carter. Nice call, Mr. Bardo. Uh, Josh Carter is not going to do many things on the offensive end, but he can shoot the three when he's open. AM is now five for eight from downtown. Right running baseline will be tagged for a foul by AC Law the fourth. Win an NCAA related prize every 35 seconds at mycokerewards.com slash NCAA. And I like that play, uh, Roberts, the pressure release at the elbow. They throw it to him and they get the back door for Wright going to the rim. Evendorf checks into the game. Jerry McNamara sits down. Robert swings it to Watkins. Kavalovskis got a hand on that one, deflected it. Kirk leaves it for Law, dumps it off to Jones. Oh, they're really getting good penetration and looking to push the ball every time they get a long rebound. That time Kirk got a steal and pushed it up and they were able to convert. Right, that was the extra pass for a layup where Syracuse had the extra pass for a turnover that prior possession. Roberts is fouled underneath. Take a look at this ball movement. Here's the lady. You just, you know, you come inside, and this is just very unselfish. Law probably could have put that up, but he gave it up for a sure dunk. That's great team play. Dominic Kirk got the foul. His third, Terrence Roberts at the free throw line. A lot of times, fouling Roberts is like a turnover. I mean, it's just not a bad idea. Yeah, he, he's got good form from the line. I mean, his... his Mechanics look really sound, but it seems to be more of a concentration thing with him than anything else. Got that one to fall. Texas A&M by six with five and a half remaining. That's really that third foul on Kirk is really going to hurt them. He's been very solid here in the first half. Well, they've got two guys out there now and. Uh, and Walker and Carter who have shown they can shoot the three against this zone. There he is. Walker gets the rebound. No block out, and of course, anytime you play this zone, that's one of the real pitfalls of it. But Tim, you know, if there's a team that should know how to rebound out of the zone, it's Syracuse. I mean, it's, it's what they do. And, uh, you know, 38 a game, just a plus one there. Carter tries the other wing, missed everything. Air ball taken out of the air by Nichols to Devendorf. Now you know Jim Beheim would love to see McNamara get into the column here before halftime. It would emotionally charge the team and this fan base from upstate New York. Devendorf, Roberts tries to follow. Kavalovskis pulls it out of there for the Aggies. Walker lost it in the ball fake and then ran right into his own teammate. He and Jones hit the deck. Numbers. He, you, you know, Timmy, he, he's not moving well. Jerry, Jerry, I've been watching him a little bit. He is really laboring out on the floor. Watkins lost it. Those quick hands for the Aggies. Devendorf tried to give it up for a three and to, to McNamara, and he, he just couldn't get set to get the shot. Uh, you, you see now McNamara telling Devendorf, don't hold it. But it was the right decision by Devendorf, constantly looking for McNamara in the, in the fast break situation. Carter 
Oh, he's got no conscience. Threw up an air ball and he stepped away about 25 feet before launching that one. Aggies lead by six with 3.28 remaining. Texas A&M leads by six and coming up on singular at the half, Greg Clark and Seth will take you out for a live look in at all the action going on in the NCAA tournament and then they'll get you caught up on the latest tournament news plus a singular Naismith watch update all coming up on singular at the half. Uh, story here is uh, Sharon McNamara, much like Big Baby Davis of LSU in the opening half, struggling. Lynn Davis did have one field goal in the first half before coming back to record a double-double and LSU's win over Iona. But similar to LSU right here, Syracuse hanging tough with their, their lead man struggling. Yeah. Maintaining contact is what they're doing. Well, and I think also that LSU had the, the hope and the knowledge that Glenn Davis would come alive, and I don't get the sense that that's out there for Syracuse right now, that, that somebody on in the interior is going to step up and be a force. We take a look at our game tracks. Uh, Air Force acquitted themselves nicely in their loss to Illinois, losing by nine. Indiana and San Diego State, that's a matchup. Uh, no Seth Davis, like Steve Fisher's team and the opportunity that the Aztecs may have. And Duke with the uh, early lead over Southern. So uh, those scores always available to you nonstop in our coverage here on CBS. That's the, uh, the the carrot and the stick for Duke. They get uh, to go to Greensboro, <laughs> close to home, but on a Thursday and hey. uh, on the short turnaround from, from Sunday. Yeah, and, and let's say this. GW moves the ball up the floor and is as athletic as any team needs to be to give Duke trouble in the second round. Or could, could it be the, the second D.C. area team that, uh, that gets into Duke this year? Yeah, absolutely. Twenty-four twenty, Texas A&M with 2.55 and counting here in the opening half. See the Syracuse bench getting into the game, trying to urge their teammates on. Guys have really picked up the intensity here in the last couple of possessions. Walker from downtown missed it all and it turns into a wonderful pass. That was a lob, Timmy. Come on. Josh Carter <laughs> goes up to get it. <laughs> Always reaching the G-Man. <laughs> Texas A&M extending that defense, leading by six against Syracuse. Even Dorn with a scoop to the hoop. Jerry McNamara has not scored in this game. That groin injury obviously giving him some trouble. Like Jaminski said uh, to us earlier, he's, uh, his movement off the ball was, it was even noticeable even when not operating at the point. Rebound control to Louis McCroskey. Too much dribbling there. Not a good idea, and Jim Beheim upset with him. Yeah, you got to get it to a ball handler. Rush up the floor, get it to a guard, let him handle. Well, Josh Wright is in the backcourt along with Devendorf. Krauske gets going a little too fast at times, wanting to make a play, wanting to have an impact when he gets on the floor. And he's had some issues with uh, Coach Beheim this year along those lines, too. Oh, Law takes it right to the rack. A.C. Law, the junior from Kimball High School in Dallas, Texas. And the lead is six. Yeah, I think first team to 60 might be a pretty good call in this game. Yeah, right? this a foul, a block against Walker. Well, CBS Sports Line keeps you close to the action with live scoring and video highlights. Get up to the minute scores and on demand highlights for each first round game at CBSSportsLine.com. Jerry McNamara will check back into the game for McCroskey. And Josh Wright also sits down as Roberts has joined the front line with Daryl Watkins. And also Demetrius Nichols. Yeah, Devendorf is one of those unique players with good size at 6'4, some quicks and a streaky shooter, and he can create some opportunities for Syracuse. Timeout, Texas AM. The Big 12 against the Beasts of the Big East a week ago. Texas A&M leads at 28 to 22. We mentioned uh, the lower seeds 
really having their way in the first round of this tournament. Montana a winner earlier today against Nevada. Here in uh, Jacksonville an 11 seed. Wisconsin Milwaukee look very impressive in the Minneapolis bracket against uh, Oklahoma. And now Texas A&M a double digit seed trying to do in the number one story in college basketball from just seven days ago here in our finale. You know, Tim, if you look at them, both teams are shooting about the same percentage, but Texas A&M has 10 more field goal attempts than does Syracuse, and I think it's a function of a couple things, Stephen. One, turnovers, but they're about even, but offensive rebounding for the Aggies has been very good. They've been, they've been quicker to those long rebounds and loose balls. I agree. And it seemed to have a, 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 a different sense of urgency than the Syracuse players do. You can see in spurts, the Q's picks it up, but they haven't been able to sustain it like AM has throughout the first half. Jones, effective at the line. Texas AM extends that lead all the way out to eight. McNamara, again, the story in this half has yet to score. And he has been dogged by Law and Dominic Kirk throughout this entire first half. And the foul will go against Law. Just no room. And so oftentimes we hear the statement made, they won't allow you to run your stuff. And they're, I mean, it is chin to chin defensively throughout this first half. It really is. And AC Law, not known as their best defender, but doing a pretty good job besides the reach at the last moment. Dominique Kirk, their really locked down defender on the bench with three fouls. We talked we talk to Jerry McNamara yesterday about what he went through, Steve, uh, when you think about it. I mean, he, he's been playing not only with physical ailments, but also mental fatigue may be setting in, Mike. Well, and it's, the thing, too, is you worry about it doesn't take much to get a score off. Yeah. And do those two free throws right there all of a sudden open things up for McNamara just on, a, on an innocent little play like that? But, um, yeah, I mean, here's, you know, McNamara has to deal with his last home game and the, the, the finality of a college career that has been absolutely spectacular by anybody's standards. That's what makes this uh, magnificent tournament over the next three weeks so great. Seniors not wanting to play their last game. Only a second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Watch for a high screen for AC Law. Carter on the wing. Nothing but net. Two threes for him at the buzzer. McNamara still in search of his first field goal, and the Aggies have their largest lead at the break, a 17-7 run. They lead it by nine. We'll send you to Greg with Singular at the half after these messages. You're watching CBS Sports on our 25th road to the Final Four. It's the upstart Aggies with the lead at halftime. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA basketball continues after this message and a word from your local station. At halftime, the Orange find themselves in a familiar position, backs against the wall, trailing by nine to Texas A&M. As you look at the numbers, again, the glaring factor here, McNamara without a field goal, only two points, at the free throw line. Tim Brando along with Stephen Bardo and Mike Jaminski. Our finale here in Jacksonville. And Mike, I'm, I'm sure you're as impressed as I am with Texas A&M. They have truly been outstanding. They've done a number of things well. They've just defended extraordinarily well. They've shot the three. Um, they've got offensive rebounds. And I think the big key, only six turnovers for the Aggies, Stephen. And the Aggies have done a really good job defensively holding the starting backcourt of Syracuse, McNamara, Devendorf, and Nichols. Two of ten shooting, only six points. So, really forcing the big men to carry the load. If you think about it, and that groin problem that had been with McNamara the last two or three weeks, and then the uh, quick turnaround and long travel after four straight games, that, that may be part of it. But in truth, Texas A&M has just been up in his chin throughout the entire night. As we open the second half, this is a 
Texas A&M team that hasn't been in the NCAA tournament since 1987. And Billy Gillespie's club doing it with its signature defense to get a nine-point lead at the break. And uh, Carter and Roberts leading the way. From a scoring standpoint, it'll be very interesting to see how McNamara tries to get himself involved in the Syracuse offense here in the second half. Look at Law, just stay with it even after the deflection by Syracuse. Law for three. Off the front iron, tapped out to Devendorf. And if the first half is any indication, Timmy, a nine-point lead is a big lead in this type of game. Watkins gets caught in a tie ball, but Law picks up the foul. Player control. That's uh, Law's third foul, and that's important to Billy Gillespie. Not too many answers for him with Law's in trouble. And he joins Dominique Kirk with three personal fouls as well. Josh Wright bringing it up for Syracuse. Characteristic there of AC Law out of control. And as you said, Tim, that's a critical foul for AM. Have to get him out of the game. Texas AM plays a lot of people, but not many that are as good as Law in the backcourt. McNamara really not close. And not much lift, Mike, in that jump shot. Yeah, you see, he's just been grimacing, and it just looks like one of those games where, where everything is. All, all the fatigue, the injuries, and it's all kind of coming to a head for McNamara. He just can't seem to get anything going. Well, someone will have to pick him up emotionally. He did so much verbally to lead his team, much more so than Syracuse fans had seen throughout the course of the year. Another foul spotted, that time Wright getting involved over in the corner. Here's that lift we're talking about, or lack thereof. Yeah, and he's not, I mean, he's not a guy who's really going to rise up and shoot, but certainly when your legs go, the first thing that goes is your jump shot, especially a three-pointer, and he's, he's desperately trying to do something to spark his team. He got a pretty good look that time. I believe it was, uh, I don't remember who that was on the pick that freed him, but they're really trying to look for him in the half court. Carter off the front iron. Look at Josh Wright motor. That's the guy that can pick him up. You guys talked about his energy. There's an example of it right there. Right, and with, with him and McNamara, at least it takes the ball handling responsibilities away from McNamara and let him maybe concentrate on scoring a little bit more. Boy, Jones has been instructed to look weak side once he catches the ball in the paint. Saved, nice job by Walker. Hey, you know, just things like that yeah. that that kid does for this ball club. That's what you call a powerless forward move there by Walker. So very strong for this team. So many times coaches have to deal with effort in a season. And uh, I dare say Billy Gillespie rarely has to coach effort. Oh, no. And just their practices and their preseason conditioning allow them to come out and play with the energy and heart that you see right now. Well, Roberts missed an opportunity to feed Darrell Watkins. And Jim Bayon is very upset about it. Syracuse really not sharing the ball as well as he'd like. Down on the low post, Texas A&M, though, struggling offensively themselves. You can see A&M will get real patient here with the lead. Oh, Jones, sweeping jump hook in the lane. And the lead back to nine. Right where they were at halftime. And he's a guy who has a tendency to get in foul trouble, Tim, but against this zone, he's, he's played at high post as a passer, but when he lurks along the baseline, he's found scoring opportunities. Roberts. Boy, nice play. Rubbing off the screen and Roberts ducking in. Good job by Syracuse getting the bucket when they need it most. Look at that. 37 field goals to only 24 for Syracuse. And that's an old uh, hockey stat. More shots on goal generally means you're going to be successful. Well, that's, that's you know, South Alabama's in the prior game, they're 
today that their philosophy to get more possessions and get more shots up. But uh, there you see the offensive rebound. Both teams shooting about the same percentage. So the mathematics works that if you get more attempts up, you're probably going to have the lead, especially when Syracuse shooting one of nine from behind the arc. Notice the deliberate approach now, AM. Trying to shorten the game up a little bit with each possession. Good pass baseline over to Walker and a follow by Kavalovskis. No block out from the Syracuse interior. You, you, you get misses and you, you have to clean it up and go down the other end. Syracuse unable to do that throughout this game. You notice how Syracuse has even slowed down their half court attack. Have called, kind of fallen into the, the rhythm of AM. Roberts wanted a foul, did not get it. You think of the toughness in the Big East, and eight teams, a record number of Big East teams in the NCAA. It's been a rough day for that conference, to sit, both this afternoon and tonight. And frankly, right now, AM out toughing Syracuse, particularly in the low block and on the glass. Another great pass interior. Would have counted had it gone. Excellent dime dropped by Dominic Kirk inside to Joseph Jones. Timeout. Antonis Kamalovskis. Yagi from Lithuania being heard from on the glass. Welcome back to Jacksonville. We're in the Atlanta bracket, first round. Take a look at our tournament summary. Gonzaga defeating Xavier. Adam Morrison at 35. The Big East 0 for 2 today. Seton Hall beaten by Wichita State. And Alabama took out Marquette. Syracuse in trouble here. And uh, frankly, if they don't find a way to get Jerry McNamara an opportunity to some easy baskets, he has never gone through a game without a field. Think about it, 134 games entering today has never had a game without a field goal. Well, I doubt we're going to see that tonight, but AM has really done a good job of limiting, limiting his opportunities and forcing someone else to beat them, similar to what we saw in the game previous to this, where LSU clamped down a little bit on those guards from my own. Well, uh, you can see where, where fatigue has really played a, a role. Since the UConn win in the quarterfinals, they beat Georgetown 58-57, and then Pitt in the championship game 65-51. So low-scoring games since that time, and this one certainly is shaping up like that. Unlike LSU, though, Syracuse, a team that relies so heavily on that 2-3 zone, and the pace of play is such that it might be at times more difficult. There you see the hoop and the harm. Watkins running the curl and got the special delivery in the lane. Uh, he was terrific in the Big East tournament. He had 11 and a half points, eight rebounds, three blocks in that run. So a big contributor. And you know what? That last little section, I saw that Jerry McNamara had a little bit of explosiveness in his step. He looked a little different. Let's see how he goes out. Four fouls on Dominic Kirk. Kirk is the primary defender on McNamara, so maybe Jerry can shake free here while Kirk is on the bench. And he's getting on the way back, went to each of his teammates, getting a little pat, got him a little fired up. It's been said of Darrell Watkins, he's got a big East body with the mind of a shooting guard. Jim Bayham's had a few of those in his day. <laughs> Shot clock winding down again near 10. Oh, nice pass. Again, Kavalovskis looking inside to Joseph Jones. 41-31. I don't know if that delivers sign. If you keep getting results, that's fine. But if that bails out Syracuse a little bit and helps them save their legs going down the stretch. Yeah, but it's demoralizing when you play defense that long. And then look at this. Just pick you apart with two passes for an easy deuce. Underneath. High low action between the two bigs. Good stuff. At this time of the year, you really notice the teams that have chemistry. McNamara and company had that in the Big East as he dumps it off to Terrence Roberts. Ian Roberts developed that last week during that four-game stretch. 
after that abysmal effort in Chicago against Jerry Wainwright's DePaul team, losing by 39. And just watching Texas A&M, you can really tell these guys like each other. Well, I consider, too, the last two possessions for Syracuse dumps the inside. Jones, not there. Demetrius Nichols with the rebound. Good job by Wright. Looked like he was in trouble that time. Sure, the basketball and gave his team a chance here in the half court set. Wing jumper gets the side of the backboard and then a bailout foul given up by the Aggies. Monday on CSI Miami, an agent puts everyone's lives at risk in a new episode of the mega hit drama Monday on CBS, America's number one network. Antonis uh, Kavalaskis getting the foul at first. Oh, bad pass. Wow, did you see the lack of effort in McNamara to try to get that inbounds pass? That, that was a little strange, Mike. Well, I just think, you know, he, he may just be reluctant to make a quick lateral move mm -hmm. with that groin to, you know, to, to, to thinking that it might aggravate him. He may just be sitting there in the back of his head. Certainly uncharacteristic of him. I agree with you, Stephen. Yeah, it's a young man with more fight in his heart than anybody in, in America. See him give up on a play. Mike is probably right on with that injury. Law runs it down. Texas A&M able to extend it. Dig into that shot clock a bit more. Shorten the game in effect. With the uh, offensive rebound. Here's Walker for three. They are preci precise here in the second half in the half court offense. Every single time. That they move the ball around and, and wait late in the shot clock, they get a good look. Nine in the game for Walker. McNamara. Well, the iron unkind to Jerry McNamara all night long. Still unable to hit a field goal. And Chris Walker, one time interim mural player in College Station in the NCAA. Texas A&M with a game equaling largest lead of 11 over Jim Beheim's Orange here in Jacksonville. Tim Brando along with Stephen Bardo and Mike Jaminski. You know, you may, you may mention of something, Billy Gillespie now sort of using the shot clock in each possession and that that may actually give Syracuse a bit of a break. At what point, Mike, do you have to abort the 2-3 zone if you're Syracuse oh. and you're down by a, a, a margin equal to this. Jim Beheim told us yesterday against the Paul, he did it when they were down 15 and it wound up a 50 point. <laughs> so, I, I don't know if he's going to be able to, you know, to have confidence in his team's man to man to do that. There have been times when he's come with some full court pressure that's been effective. <laughs> nice steal. That's where the zone is so effective. Right to Roberts. Well, Wright has got to be one of the faster players in the nation when he has the rock in his hand. He's, he's got a fifth and sixth gear. But right now, and, and Jim Beheim hoping that Devendorf comes alive. You know, that McNamara, you know, physically hobbling a little bit. And, a different backcourt combination out there with Devendorf as the scorer. Oh. Jones to Kavalaskis, that's a foul. We'll go against Terrence Roberts. Another point blank shot for Texas A&M. Once again, the patience in the high-low set paying dividends. This young man's got a really nice baseline jumper. And it was mentioned uh, to us by Billy Gillespie that the uh, the light bulb really came on for him as they got into early February. Never have to question the toughness of the uh, European front court player when he makes his way into college basketball. We've seen it in the past with players like Darius Sangaya and many, many others. 
Dievendorf goes crossover right over Walker. Oh, halfway down the cylinder and out. That could have gotten him going. He is well stuck on two points, and these are two guys that combined for 28 for Syracuse. It's just a lot for everybody else to overcome. Ma. Nichols comes down with a rebound. Roberts, nice job of saving it. In a game that has featured tenacious defense from Texas A&M, Jim Beheim's Big East Tournament champions find themselves down by 10 to Billy Gillespie's squad with 10-13 remaining. It has been a textbook defensive effort on the part of the Aggies. And the bigger story here is that Jerry McNamara is obviously not himself. With no field goals to show for his night, you see he's trying to be an inspirational leader. That uh, groin injury obviously giving him some trouble. He's been favoring it all night long. 0 for 4 for him, all from three-point range. And then the guy he was trying to pick up right there was Devendorf, because that's, that's the, the three-point shooter that's out on the floor for Syracuse. Devendorf has struggled with this shot as well. Nice job by Kavalaskis. Good decision to pull it back out. The possess possession of the ball is so important at this point for AM. 10 and 6 in the Big 12. Many questioned their out of conference schedule as to whether they were worthy of an at large bid. And they are certainly playing as if they've been here before. And the facts are they haven't. Texas AM in their first NCAA tournament in almost 20 years. 1987, the last time they made a trip on the road to the Final Four. Which, by the way, happened to be a year that. Syracuse played for the national championship in New Orleans, losing to Indiana on the Keith Smart shot. Scramble situation. Syracuse right out of bounds as he slipped to the floor, so the Aggies will have it. Every single time tonight, it seems Texas A&M is coming up with the loose ball. Right there, Walker doesn't give up. Yeah, it's, it's that kid, too, that's been making, uh, you know, Chris Walker been right there hustling the whole night. Timmy, I mean, talk about this program and making inroads in a conference that is very top-heavy yes. nationally. And then Billy Gillespie seems to be undaunted by that fact. And you're talking about the, you know, the Texas and the Kansas of the world, Absolutely. Oklahoma. And uh, to, to go in and accomplish what he has in a short time, astounding feat. And he recognizes that uh, teams like uh, Oklahoma State, Iowa State are going to be there again. They just had difficult seasons this year. Demetrius Nichols pulls down the rebound. Syracuse, though, maintaining contact. They've been down by as many as 11. The Aggies are uh, not necessarily the kind of team that can throw a knockout punch, but the Cuse has been close to being knocked out a time or two. Devendorf, a nice move on the bounce. And a much better decision. You're struggling to score the ball. He had a notion, five second count. Syracuse goes for the full court pressure, yep. making a difference. And, and Dindorf was fouled in that point, had a notion to shoot the three, but instead got into the rim, got a layup, and as they're making shots, it allows them to get into their pressure. And as this game has gone on and AM has been so dominant for Syracuse to have possession of the ball down six, they've got to feel good about themselves at this point. The faithful that have made their way down from upstate New York are standing urging on with let's go orange even Dorf running the curl nice jump stop oh that's sweet that was McNamara-esque yeah, I was gonna say he looks he looks a little bit like his mentor sitting over on the bench this is now an 8-1 run for Syracuse Boy, that, that press has really worked wonders for Syracuse. And M looks confused. Not there. Very quick shot by Carter. And Jones is tagged over the back. Billy Gillespie disagrees. Yeah, but I guess that's not the shot you wanted in that instance. They'd spent the whole time running clock over the last 10 or 12 possessions and then a quick three. Um, you, you need to look a little bit better than that. But is this now a time, Stephen, where you've got a team who hasn't been here in 20 years in a program 
facing an Orange team that's been here a lot and has won a championship in the last five years. Dorf leaning in, has it rejected. Syracuse down by as many as 11, have clawed to within four with some full court pressure. Are only down by four against the Aggies. We'll be right back. As you look at our game summary, if you had said to Jim Beheim, you'll only be down four, hitting only one of 11 from three-point range, I think he'd say, I take it with this much time remaining, Mike. And right now, Devendorf seems to be taking over for an injured. And I think we can safely say that, uh, that Jerry McNamara is injured. No, no question. And he is picked up. And uh, But also, I think if you're Billy Gillespie, you, you had to talk press offense yeah. in that huddle. They need to get organized even on that end of the ball. Yeah, they sped the game up. It was a half-court game for most of the second half. And with that pressure, they've picked up the pace. They've gotten some penetration, gotten Robertson Watkins involved as well. And Dominic Kirk picked up his fourth foul, Stephen. I think it really altered what Texas A&M could do defensively, too. Yeah, I agree. And you want to keep Kirk on the best perimeter player. You have to adjust, bringing Carter in the game, and he's not quite as strong defensively. Davalovskis picks up the foul. One, one more foul, and uh, Syracuse would be in the penalty. Devendorf to trigger it in. Well, Jerry McNamara, who lifted his team, now looking for some help from the younger players to keep his career alive. That's a walk. Jim Beheim disagrees vehemently with that call as Demetrius Nichols is called for steps. That was a big possession, a chance to cut it to two. Law with a little stutter step to Kavalaskis. Rushed it, turns into a pass off the glass from Law. Let's see now if Texas A&M goes back to attack uh, They were running clock before, but that possession, they broke the press to score. I think they need to re regain their aggressiveness offensively. That was their first field goal, Mike, in five minutes. Devendorf in traffic. Forced that shot. And Jerry McNamara looking to come in on the next dead ball for Syracuse. Dominic Kurtz got to be careful. He's got four fouls. It was very aggressive on that on that defensive play. Devendorf got him on the elbow. With NCAA March Madness on demand, you can watch live tournament games on your computer outside of your viewing area for free. Sign up now at NCAAsports.com slash MMOD. You know, I, saw, I made the point earlier about being delivered. I'm a big fan of attacking when you have the lead. And I think we saw Milwaukee do that earlier today. They had a lead and they kept pressing and they extended and took control of that game. I just think it's difficult when you're attacking to get passive run clock. I mean, they were effective to a degree. But then now you find yourself in a situation where you got to relight that candle, and it's not easy to do sometimes. Many times during the NCAA tournament, going from one round to another, from the first couple of rounds to the round of 16, we talk about the level of stage the players are on. For Texas A&M, this is as big a stage as they've ever been on. So mentally, you begin to wonder if they are looking at that clock a bit too soon. Yeah, but these guys are, are warriors, and they've done it all year long. They're not going to really change their level of intensity. And Syracuse has just matched it. Kavalovskis down. Slowly trying to get up. What a tough young man he is. Go, go, go. Billy Gillespie will have to send the trainer out. And you see, it looks like they're wiping up. I think he might have gotten hit. Uh, it looks like there's uh, maybe some stitches required. I think he got popped in the nose. I mean, you expect to see that when you play at Texas A&M. A lot of free-for-all underneath the basket. Take a look at the play. Uh, everybody going up. I think it's on the back end here, yep. Too many bodies in there to get a real good look at it. He'll take a seat. And uh, Josh Carter is back on the floor, the freshman. Jones is also out there. And uh, coming into the game is Marlon Pompey to replace Kavalovskis. Marlon Pompey, not a bad substitution at this point. Doesn't try to do anything outside of his offensive repertoire. 
Very good defender and will be active on the glass. So not a bad choice here. Definitely had the uh, blood on the uniform. I guess his Kabalaska's uh, nostrils have something to do with that. Kabalaska's lobbying for playing time right now with Billy Gillespie along the sidelines as McNamara back in tries to make something happen. Goes to the offhand and is rejected. Roberts almost had his pocket pick. <laughs> I fought the law and that time the law didn't win, but more often times than not, AC Law is just all over the place. And this is your call, Steve. This is Pompey coming in with the long arms, moving well. Get in the block. Over six minutes left, and the lead is eight for Texas A&M. The 12th seed trying to take out the 5th seed and to become the second team to do that today. And that seeding, as you see Roberts using the glass. But Roberts is so quick off his feet. You think you're in good position, but he's able to get off so fast. Has the advantage of the knee. Law with Carter, Dominic Kirk, Joseph Jones, and Marlon Pompey on the floor. Five on the shot clock. Law tries to create on his own. Roberts the rebound. What was that you said, Stephen, about first one to 60? <laughs> Five and change remaining. That may be the magic number. The points are hard to come by with such a good defensive squad. Just not happening for Jerry. Ball was tapped out. Really a good hustle play by Nichols, but to no avail. Out of bounds, it belongs to the Aggies. And uh, Josh Wright checks back in for Jerry McNamara. The, the, the look on his face said it all after that jump shot. He's just, your, your mind is trying to will your body into something it can't respond to. The relationship between he and Jim Beheim has always been good, but it really strengthened in that four game period at the Garden in New York. The way Jimmy had his back after all the criticism over the student newspaper and the Syracuse paper and the overrated comments. You know, their relationship really became even more solid. 2,000 point score and he's won a national championship yet, so I'd like to be that overrated. <laughs> right. Beep, beep. Don't blink. Josh Wright makes it a two possession game, 49 45. He is the road runner for the Orange. Uh, Jim Beheim wanted an offensive foul, didn't get it. Law to Kavalovskis. And Watkins really with a good foul that time. They'll send Antonis to the free throw line where he's a 56% free throw shooter, making him earn it there. Good choice by AC Law to attack like you were talking about, Mike. Boy, I thought that was a shot, didn't you? No, he was trying to dump it off uh, oh, to thought, Jones. Okay. It helps to have an extra set of eyes. I thought he was taking it to the rack. That inbounds play was perfect except for the execution. Right hand hit. And you get a feeling if Syracuse can ever get this well, game tied, that it would really be trouble emotionally for Texas A&M. And, and don't count Jerry McNamara out quite yet. Yeah. Uh, for you know, I, I'd like him in the last minute of this game. <laughs> you think? Texas A&M, you get a feeling, Stephen, that they really are emotionally hanging on at this point. Oh, definitely. And shot clock running down once again, and they're going to have to manufacture something here. Jones tapped out by Kabalowskis, but right into Josh's hands, and he'll wait for his offense to set up. We talked about it. Last three minutes of an NCAA tournament game, shots are a little bit tougher to knock down. The Hall of Famer, Jim Beheim, recognizes it with a timeout. And we would like to welcome those of you just joining us. Timeout taking a critical possession coming up for the Orange, who trail Texas A&M. 
Syracuse has cut it to four, and now let's take a look at our power eight power in the paint, and key man, they've done it with Roberts inside. Eric Roberts has come alive in this second half, maybe 15 points, seven rebounds for him, and he has gotten to the rim on a number of occasions. They'll need more of that in the remaining 325, and what do you anticipate with McNamara out, Devendorf and Wright in the backcourt? This is obviously a critical possession. They've had a chance to cut it to two or one two other times in the second half. I, so I said before, I you know, I think Jim Beheim gets it with this group. If they can get it into the last minute tied, uh, then Mr. McNamara comes back in and sees, uh, sees what he has left. 134 games, and he has never not had a field goal. Right now, Syracuse is going to have to create as the shot clock is under two. Right. Runs into a roadblock, gives it up to Watkins over Kavalovskis. Roberts on the offensive boards, and there's going to be a foul inside. Over the back against Roberts. And Jim Bayham in disbelief. Three minutes remaining. We've seen that look from him before, haven't we? <laughs> Wednesday on America's most watched new show, a vigilante strikes in a new episode of Criminal Minds. Wednesday on CBS, America's number one network. Our game reset, the Aggies with a two possession lead. You see the timeout story, but it may take a while to play the last three. Neither team at the double bonus, the possession arrow to Syracuse. Well, as Texas A&M has come down the stretch, this 10 of their last 11 shots. You'd like to see them get AC Law in a creative situation coming off the bounce where he can really use an assortment of floaters and runners that he has that we really haven't seen this evening. Since going up by 11, Mike, AM has scored only six points, make it seven in the last nine minutes. We talked about the stage. Jimmy, yep. it's, this is the biggest stage, and so it's, it's a big first test for this ball club and for the orange they've been here before recently even Dorf in the backcourt with Wright Roberts Demetrius Nichols there's the job from Devendorf, draining the tray suddenly a one possession game well you know he's Walker had that knee surgery over the summer and it looked like he froze in a little shake that got Walker to stand up Kavalovskis is deep. There's the trailer law over right. Oh, man. What a shot with the offhand trying to avoid the charge. That's AM being aggressive like you were looking for, Mike. Devendorf again. Well, that was well defended. Beautiful job by Chris Walker that time. Law again. Right back at you. <laughs> AC is Ducey, and the lead is up to seven. And Law. Telling those fans to get involved. Well, he made the shot against Texas, and he's making the plays here at the end. After the Texas win, he hugged his mom. He's looking for somebody to hug right now. Already one upset here in uh, Jacksonville earlier today. Wisconsin, Milwaukee, an 11 seed advancing in the Minneapolis bracket with a victory over Oklahoma, the Big 12. And now the... Uh, Conference brethren of the Sooners trying to uh, return the favor to the beasts of the East. Last last week's uh, conference tournament champions in New York. You got to think we're seeing a little bit of a passing of the baton here from uh, McNamara to Josh Wright and Devendorf in the backcourt. And you wonder also if uh, McNamara sitting over there next to Bayheim if he's going to be a coach someday. From way downtown, rattled home by Nichols and a quick timeout taken by Syracuse don't go anywhere it's a two possession game with 146 remaining we welcome those of you that have just joined us Aggies have led by as many as 11 we'll be right back to Jacksonville after this a look at our game reset Tim Brando along with Stephen Bardo and Mike Jaminski again uh, Syracuse can still stop the clock, and that's important. The Big East 0-2 uh, today. Marquette a loser. Seton Hall 
dropped by Wichita State. Alabama took out the Tom Green's team, and now the full court pressure from the Hughes. Carter goes over the top to Law. Wow, what a press break. Almost like a fly pattern in football. No one back safety-wise for Syracuse. AC Law takes advantage. Law has 10 of the last 12 points for Texas A&M. Well, I thought Life well, took a little bit of a gamble on that too, Stephen, was slowing up and uh, you run the risk of getting that shot clock. And Jim Beheim wants to extend the defense a bit. And a foul picked up by Roberts against Law. He needs to extend the game as best he can. And, th and this whole run almost never took place. I mean, AC Law really came close to transferring when, when Billy Gillespie first right. got there. I mean, those two did not hit it off very well. He uh, evidently had problems communicating. Yeah. And um, it's hard to believe that a young man that would be related to uh, Ernie Banks would have trouble communicating, but he did. And a reminder, the winner of this game takes on LSU. He actually forced the practice to last longer. There were actually players from A&M that were saying, you got to start talking. Eight-point lead for A&M. 115 and counting, and a turnover by Syracuse. The Aggies have total control now. Well, A&M looks like they've weathered the storm. A solid job of attacking here in the last minute and a half, not settling for anything other than a layup. But in, in Syracuse, you know, you give them credit for fighting the good fight, but they've relied so heavily on number three, Mr. McNamara, and, and he has not been a part, he's, he, he just has not been able to play today, and uh, for them to, you know, to hang this close, give them credit. Our Chevrolet players of the game, AC Law from Texas A&M, and Terrence Roberts of Syracuse in recognition of their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. America's brand supports America's best. Chevy at American Revolution. Law, the last 10 Aggie points. Well, as you mentioned, Mike, the passing of the torch. Oh, how about that? That almost dropped through. That would have been an amazing bucket to hit from way downtown. Foul underneath. And it, yeah, Devendorf having to do so much, Wright having to do the same. And we're seeing history, guys, 134 games, and never has Jerry McNamara not had a field goal. And again, you, you can't, very few in the history of this sport have been able to script the way they go out. But the, this is not the way you want to see Jerry McNamara go out. The pride of Scranton, Pennsylvania. And uh, the introduction of a new program, perhaps, in NCAA tournament play, that being Texas A&M. Beginning in the second round, they can finally say, been there, done that. Well, Bi Billy Gillespie, all season long, they talked about Texas A&M and the soft non-conference schedule. The fact they got into what is considered, what was considered to be a, a lesser Big 12 conference and really caught fire midway and culminated with a, a huge win at home over Texas on a last second shot by AC Law. I'm not even sure, Mike and Steven, that, that they would have gotten into the tournament field, Texas A&M, had it not been for the way they competed in the Big 12 tournament game with Texas. I, th I think a lot of but people wanted to see that that was no fluke, uh, the game played in College Station, and they did play Texas very, very well in that game. That's, I'm a big believer in validating wins, and there are a lot of teams that have beaten top-ranked teams once and then lost the game they shouldn't or have not followed through with that, and, and I think that uh, Texas A&M certainly has validated that win and uh, validated the, their selection. Somewhere... Shelby Metcalf and people near and dear to him are making phone calls and he's doing a lot of smiling. He was the longtime coach who meant so much to that program in the 70s and 80s. Timeout. 40 seconds remaining. The lead is 10. 
It is all about heart. Texas A&M playing with plenty of it. Dominic Kirk pounding that chest. Our game reset, only 40 ticks remaining. And uh, simply nothing left in the tank for Jerry McNamara and in many respects for this team. I think it's been a gallant effort in many respects defensively uh, for Syracuse. And I believe we had a uh, late whistle. Walker checking into the game. Are they allowed some extra time? Kirk had some blood on his jersey, so he was forced to leave the game for a moment. So the officials now finally blow the whistle and get the ball in play. Quick foul by Daryl Watkins. And they'll send Jones to the free throw line, a 73% free throw shooter. Now they've made their last 10 at the strike, something you've got to do regardless of the size of the stage. And what you notice if you look at Texas A&M right now, they're not jumping around and you know, hugging or anything like that. No. Billy's, I'm sure, has told them, act like you've been here before and get a mindset that you expect to win these types of games. And, Mike, as we look at this matchup coming in for Syracuse, this was really about as difficult style as they could face on tired legs. Yeah, it just, you know, you, you go back to, you know, playing on Saturday and the run that they had and the trip down here and, and, and a team that just extracts every ounce of energy just to manufacture points against them. Well, and Jim Beheim was very concerned about that when he talked to us yesterday. Devendorf. Roberts on the glass. And they're going to say he was fouled on the way up to grab the jersey. Roberts was hoping for the bucket. A little continuation. He won't get it. Let's talk about Texas A&M matching up with LSU now in the second round. Um, as tough as the Aggies are, and they actually are deeper than LSU, they have a lot of interchangeable parts. How do they deal with Davis, Thomas, Tasman Mitchell, and that incredible front line? It starts down there, 94 feet, and they don't let they don't let them get to that point. I think they really pressure out on LSU's guards and make them uh, break pressure. So scramble them up. Absolutely. Well, that has been a problem in the past. Uh, for John Brady's team. It was in this tournament a year ago against UAB in the opening round in Boise. The Tigers looked awfully confident tonight in their second half comeback. And the Aggie fans rise up as they can smell a victory, something they've not had with this program in 20 years of visit and a productive one to the NCAA. Terrence Roberts picks up the foul. That's his fifth. Our other matchup in the Minneapolis region should be uh, fun to watch as well. I think uh, maybe one of the more entertaining games of the day, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and Florida. Well, I, you know, I just think that uh, Wisconsin, Milwaukee really exposed Oklahoma uh, athletically and, you know, got it up and down, and especially their bigs. Florida, I think, Steve, is going to come with some, some better athletes along the front line. I think they'll match up a little bit better. Well, we saw Florida's bigs, Horford and Noah, really handle the basketball, get some pressure, which they'll have to do against the Panthers of Milwaukee. Well, you may be, in Florida and LSU, both out of the SEC, you're talking about two of the more formidable front lines in the country. Wright takes it right to the rack. Misses, and Watkins is fouled on the way up. 7.4, it's academic at this point. And Jim Beheim's concerns were on target yesterday when we chatted with him. <laughs> I'm laughing at Billy Gillespie and, and Joseph Jones. They look at Cavalaskis and throw up their hands like, what are you doing? <laughs> and it's a, it's a teaching point. I yeah. mean, it's, you know, it's not going to affect the outcome of the game, but there may be that situation where he's in there where it could affect the outcome of the game. So I'm sure he'll have a talk about uh, that with his center. Maybe sooner <laughs> than later. Is, right now. <laughs> By the way, there's, a, there's not a language barrier there, I can tell you. The body lean is all you need to know. And congratulations to Billy Gillespie. What a job he's done to be two-time conference coach of the year. And that young man was an intramural player only as you look at Chris Walker. And uh, was asked to 
come out for the team. And despite uh, injuries, he's been here and done a marvelous job. His right hits the three-pointer. 66-58 for Mike Kaminsky, Stephen Bardo. So long, let's go back to New York and Greg Gumbel.